Well, hello there, Quinnigan. It has been quite a while since we've uh, we've uh, watched some Castlevania. I know to them out there, you know, it's I a week to say, week. They don't think it has been. No, for them, no. For for you all watching right now, it has been approximately mm, one week since we have watched an episode of Castlevania. But to us, it has been what two weeks? Mm, uh, I think we missed two. Yeah, yeah, about two weeks worth. I don't and, remember what happened. Though. Uh, well, first off, there's a pandemic happening. Uh, okay. Second off, uh, one, it was Kinsey's birthday. Yes, it was. Yeah, it was Kinsey. Uh, Kinsey's birthday was one of them, and another one I forget was the week before that. But I, oh no, I it was me. It was my fault. I was I wasn't available. Yeah, you were I was, busy or yeah, I was out of town. I think. Oh, I was I was uh, driving down to Alabama with my mom. Uh, I was delivering, helping her deliver a cat. I remember that now. I remember you saying that now. Yeah, and I thought maybe I could get back in time, but then I realized, oh shit, I'm not going to be back till like 7 p.m. So we'll just push it to next week. Yeah. And then it was Kenzie's birthday. Hey, there you go. And now here we are. Now they're fucking old. Ha. Oh. Are they 30 now? No, they're 26. Oh, that's not old at all. I'd kill to be 26 again. Sometimes I remember that I'm 24 years old. And yeah, I, and I'm like, yeah. I I thought I was 18 like a year ago. <laughs> I'm 32, like, and I was 30 about an hour ago. <laughs> That's how it feels to me. I don't recall you turning 32. I recall you turning 30, but it feels like that was also like last birthday. I know. Like, <laughs> what happened? <laughs> Time hey, flies, Quinn. Hey, what happened? I don't know. I just woke up one morning and I was 32. I noticed all the gray in my hair and like, oh, well, that feels weird. I have gray weird. hairs. I have gray hairs. Oh, me. oh, I've got them. They stand up like a salt and pepper crew up here. <laughs> Jesus. So above all, you know, it's been a heck, you know, heck of a two weeks. Um, you know, you know, the virus kicking up again. Uh, yeah, in Tennessee, you know, uh, people are. Uh... People are people are people are starting to show up sick. Although it's mostly in like Memphis and Nashville and Chattanooga, yeah. like bigger cities. Well, here has actually, I think it was uh, Johnson City mostly that had increased. There was actually a uh, retirement home that had a breakout of cases. Yeah, that was uh, down the road. Oh god! Literally, my dad stayed there before he passed away, so it was that's, really close. Yeah, that's that's terrible. And there's been a couple of restaurants that have had to close. Um, Blackbird. And oh yeah, Blackbird. I heard Cootie about that. Browns. Um, they got a positive. Yeah. There were a couple others, I can't remember. Just a bunch of uh, and spread here. So, ladies and gentlemen, here's the lesson I think we can all take from this. Um, when it, If you don't want to spread the virus, number one, social distancing. Uh, if, if at all, try and stay home as much as humanly possible. Become a recluse in some ways. But don't plan to stay like that permanently because, trust me, <laughs> that's not healthy. Uh <laughs> Number That's coming from a YouTuber. Uh, yes, that... it's coming from a YouTuber <laughs> and a former shut-in who used to literally live in his mom's basement until he was 25. Hey, yo. Wow, way to roast yourself right here on this couch. What? Honestly, I I got nothing to hide, Quinn. I got nothing to hide. I'll, I'll, I'll talk about my past gladly. You literally just looked that camera dead ass in the lens and said, I was a stuff, stupid idiot that lived in my mom's basement and didn't do anything. And had oh, absolutely. Friends. Absolutely. <laughs> I used to blame everyone else for my problems. I used to think that everyone around me was just trying to take everything from me. So, yeah, Castlevania, you're enjoying this series a lot, yes, as it turns out. I, it actually, I was kind of questionable about my interest. I like Castlevania games. Of stuff, course, yes. But I, you were like, let's do Castlevania. And I was like, eh. <laughs> Well, given the history of video game adaptations, That's I can fair. understand. I can understand your pre, your your predilections because that because honestly, I remember when I was a kid, I watched the Super Mario Brothers movie. As and even as a kid, I thought it was a bad movie. Like when you're a kid, you don't have any con. You usually don't have a concept of what a good film or a bad oh, film yeah, is. Oh yeah, normally you go back to watch your favorite childhood film and you're like, what the fuck is this garbage? Yeah, and then even then, I went back and I watched. I watched a Super Mario Brothers movie, and I was just like, as as a kid, I was just like, you know, this isn't that good. <laughs> and and honestly, as I've gotten older, I can I can appreciate certain parts of it. Yeah. You know, the set design is actually pretty cool, but. Overall, it's not good. Not good at all. I mean, it's a movie about two Italian plumbers, and you hire a Colombian and a British guy to play two Italian plumbers. <laughs> no, don't get me wrong. I think I think Bob Hoskins looks a lot looked a lot like Mario, and I think John Leguizamo actually did pretty good. But at the same time, it's just like knowing what we know. It's just like mm, it. 
it, hanging out with y'all has ruined movies for me because now, like, I used to be ignorant. <laughs> when I met Nate, I'm sorry. When I met Nate, I was just like, yeah, it's a pretty good movie. And he's like, what are you talking about? That sucks. I'm like, well, I watched it and it was entertaining for like an hour and a half. So, I mean, it's what, what movie was it that just we... any of them? Oh, that's I, right. All of them. Well, no, like, here's the thing I don't like, for instance, there's great films I've shown. You remember when we, when we, you and me watched Shawshank? Yeah, we watched that off recording, and that was kind of what sparked the idea to do the movie. Yes, and then you watched a lot of the Marvel movies uh, to catch up for Infinity War. I'm trying to think of one. It mostly is just like I could Doctor uh, Doctor Strange, Captain America. Yeah. We did uh, one. Uh, I think it was the first Iron Man movie. Yeah. Uh, we did. Uh, I think we did one of the Avengers movie. I think it was the first Avengers movie. Yeah. We did ca- uh, Captain America: did Civil War. Oh yeah, we did a lot of them. And it, they, it was it was hard. Oh, it was. Well, it, well, what we're going to start doing here soon is we're actually going to start doing uh, the horror movies in anticipation for uh, mm-hmm. Halloween again. We're going to do them a lot sooner. Yeah. Uh, instead of trying to do them like a month before or the month of, because honestly, that shit's ridiculous. Uh, over. So we started doing the movies when we started doing the Quinn hasn't seen shit. Yes. And like. We had no fucking idea no. that it was going to be so, uh... <laughs> uh. <laughs> so taxing. It, it, it's taxing when we're you... are like, yeah, we'll just do one a day for like two weeks and it's done. And then no. we're like, okay, so we did one yesterday, um, and five days later you're like, do you feel like doing another? We're like, uh... <laughs> it, well, yeah, it, it can get tiring whenever you, whenever you try and make it, when you try and force stuff, which is why now I've learned that you have to ask people... After, you know, you have to put time in between. Like, you can do other stuff, you know, like ra- random YouTube reactions yeah. and stuff like that. But movies, that's two hours of someone's attention. And that, in the modern era, is a lot of time. And we're also doing it, like, socially. So. Yes, yeah, we're, we're having fun. We're trying to make it, like, a riff track kind of thing. I am, I definitely favor, <laughs> like, 20-minute episodes. So this is gonna have... Yeah. This is good shit right here. Oh, yes. And... Uh, there's only four episodes in the first season, which sucks. I but there was six. Oh no no no! There's more. There's uh, eight in the second season. Oh okay. Uh, but yeah. Anyway, we got this queued up here. This is Castlevania season one, episode three, Labyrinth. Here we go. Kind of want that castle tattooed on me somewhere. Oh, it's that's a great castle design. I remember when I first saw it as a so kid, it scared cool. the shit out of me. I want to get it on my face. Interesting. Very interesting. Just don't go full Mike Tyson, please. Parkour. Sliding to them DMs. So you want to stay well out of my way? Oh, shit. Oh. <laughs> oh, never mind. <laughs> Reflex is like a cat. Oh, that was kind of badass until the second time. Oh, yeah. <laughs> you're like, oh. Oh, yeah. Oh. They had a bad time. No, it looks fine. Either someone left a statue of a speaker down here or... Or that. See, I told you it was fine. Move! Right out of the family bestiary. Whoop! Oh god. Yeah. Come on. Come on. You're dead. Stop and notice you're dead. Ah. Oh. Yeet. You got him right in the eye. That 
that's usually what happens whenever I I I creel girls like that after I save their lives. You think you wouldn't do that, Trevor Belmont? Hunt the Belmonts fight monsters. I'm out of practice. Let's show you to your grandfather, and then you can come down here and get killed again. Deal? I'm Saifa Velades. <laughs> oh. oh no. Yeah, you may want to leave before the rest of the bodies thaw. Saifa <laughs> Bernardis. Torches that lie by themselves that exactly fit descriptions written by my great grandfather. Descriptions of the inside of Dracula's castle. I don't know what's down there, but it's not a messiah. I'll come back later. See if you can find some beer. <laughs> Priorities. Tell him it's beer. Saifa. <laughs> saved your life. He's rude. The bishop said to tell you that the terms of even major excommunication mean that you are obliged to appear when summoned by the church. Well, shit. Me. Look. Well, look who it is. I am the Bishop of Griffith. Clerical discipline. But you were there for the burning of Dracula's wife. I heard all about that. Oh, yes. I arranged it, in fact. He's the, the one who killed Dracula's wife. Weak. And there can be no doubt now. That she consulted with the devil. You people simply decided we were wrong to defend this land against the supernatural, and now you Belmonts have never understood the power of the word of God. The people of this city are mine. I will be the child. And that, my friends, is corruption in the highest order. Corruption of church is something that was rampant when when the catholic church held literally almost all of the power throughout europe <clears throat> during and after the dark ages I mean the salem or I mean the uh the spanish inquisition the crusades the all the wrong that the church did in the name of and i quote the name of god and by god they mean the will of the church not the will of god because you know the church itself is a fallacy in certain ways, especially when they seek to control people's lives by, uh, honestly... Well, that sounds familiar. Yeah, I know, right? But the whole thing... It, well, power. Absolute power corrupts absolutely. Every time. The very moment someone gains enough power to where every they think, oh, I can solve everyone's problems if this just happens or if that just happens... It never goes the way you plan. The whack and nothing thing about good religion, comes of it. The thing I just can't get my hand on. And this is not a, an attack on actual religion. Whatever you believe in, whatever, like, that's not what I'm talking about. But what I am talking about is, like, any preacher or, or higher priest, whatever. Preacher, bastion, whatever it archbishop. Whatever your religion yeah, can, go, can just decide. I don't like this thing, and I believe this, so I'm going to preach that and make it, like, law, basically. It's because... When, it, when they literally use their position of power to, like, project their own opinions and feelings about something and try yes. to make it, like, strict... Yes. I can't... No. <laughs> I, can't, I can't get behind that either. I mean, me, personally, to it, me... It still happens. It does, all the time. And the thing is, you have to separate that from, like, for me... I, like, I went to a church, it was a backwoods church, and not a bad backwoods church, you know, not one of these, like, snake holders, you know, cousin, like, like, sleep with your cousin, and shit like that, no, <laughs> uh, no, as a matter of fact, that was very highly frowned upon, and the one time that was, that did happen, oh the person was pretty much ran out of town, and, you know, rightfully so, because that shit's wrong. Oh. Anyway... The whole thing about it is that my pastor, you know, spoke of the wonders of, you know, the wonders of the world, the wonders of God, the wonders of, like, like he was one of those who went out and he didn't want to, like, sit inside the church all the time. He took us out into the back, uh, the back field 
behind where the church was, got in the creek, like got up the water from the creek and let it run down his fingers and just like just like like he he blessed the creek and like cast holy water in it. It was beautiful stuff. And he wanted everyone to be saved, but yet he would never force anyone into his charge. He would never force anyone to believe what he believed. He said, God does not want to force his will upon you, and anyone who tries to do that is doing exactly what God taught against. Do unto others as you would have them do unto you. I mean, yeah, a good religious leader is someone that's open, accepting, and not, like, in it for the fucking power yeah. or the clout and or what have you. Like Exactly. They don't... The position. That's not what matters. Exactly. If you're but, in it for that, you're in the wrong business. And that's exactly what's wrong here with the, with the church that exists in this universe. It is all about the. It is all about the organization of the church and not about God. And what you that see, guy thinks. Exactly. Like. Exactly. I mean, they think the speakers are evil because the speakers don't follow verbatim the word of God. Well, here's the thing, I don't follow it either because here's the part about the Old Testament. The New Testament states itself that Christ died to free us from the old, to free us from. You said old, but you meant New Testament. Or oh, sorry, I. Here's the thing about the Old Testament. No, the New Testament. No, no, no. What I'm saying is the New Testament frees us from the Old Testament. Yes. That's what I meant to say. This is an argument you guys have heard me say on this couch like five times. Yeah. Yeah. So here's the thing about the Old Testament. We are free from it because of God's action or because of Jesus' actions in the New Testament. We, like, for instance, the Ten Commandments, I hold true to that because that's a good moral center to have. But at the same time, I follow the word of Christ because, in all honesty, that's the closest you can get to God right there because he is the son of God, if you like, if you believe it. But the thing is, Christ never said anything horrible about, about homosexuals. He never said anything wrong about, like, he never, he never wanted to harm anybody. He wanted to heal the world, pray in private, and just let people be. Because, honestly, that is how you're supposed to do it. You know that SpongeBob thing? Um, I... Something about the wallet. Yeah. Patrick's like, yeah, this is not my wallet or whatever. It's kind of like that conversation that I have all the time where I'm like, so when Jesus died on the cross, we were freed from the Old Testament. Yeah, okay. All right. And in the Old Testament, there was this word that was translated to be like a gay person, but it was really a pedophile. Yeah, that sounds about right, because translation, you know, Yeah, translations mess up shit all the time. And, and I was like, yeah, okay. Okay, yeah, but we don't follow the Old Testament anyway, so even if it did say being gay was wrong, we, we wouldn't listen to it, right? Yeah, yeah, because Jesus died on the cross, yeah. So being gay isn't wrong, and you can be Christian and gay. Well, no, that's not possible. Being gay is a sin. How? And I'm like... <laughs> well, and here's the thing, and here's the thing. When in no, in no part of where Christ speaks... Does he does he compel is he compelled to argue against homosexuality? There's nothing in there. Nothing. Christ never said anything about about homosexuality. He he his his credo was very simple. Do unto others, heal the sick, and then help and then help others. I'm pretty sure that literally like there is and I'm I'm not I'm not sure. I haven't read the Bible in years, but like so if I'm wrong, sorry. I'm pretty sure there is literally a line that says the only commandment that I have for you from this point forward is to love each other unconditionally like I love you. Yes. I'm pretty sure that's in there. Like, yes. it says that very clearly. This yes. is the only thing you have to do. Yes. Love each other <laughs> unconditionally. And, you know, just... It, it, and this is Honestly, it could be summed attack. up in, like, like don't be a jerk. That's yeah. That's really the biggest thing that can be gained from the Bible. But yet there's so many people who use the Bible to and literally good. throw it at people... And try and like make them feel superior in some way. It's like I'm more pious than you because I because I believe in the good book. It's like, yeah, how much of that good book do you actually follow? Because from what I'm seeing, you ain't following a damn thing of it. There, there's a lot of corruption, and there, and don't get me started on. There are some great missionaries, but there yes. are some that oh, literally God. are in it for the travel, for the, like the fame. The, yeah, like, I yeah, yeah, this, yeah. Yeah, the whole thing about like, going somewhere and and if this if this conversation like was uncomfortable for any of you, I'm sorry. Like I respect your religion; that's everything. But I think you should be well educated. Yeah, and that you shouldn't listen to what one person says to you about Figure your religion. Your, like you need to look into as, it. As as Christ said, "Be it unto thee to find thine own salvation." Right. Because you only you can find your salvation. You cannot depend on other people to give that to you. Yeah, the, you have to seek happiness within yourself. You are your own temple. Seek to improve yourself and seek to make yourself better. 
And That's... you can't do that if you don't ever educate yourself or try to form your own opinions or look in, like, research things. Like, life is weird, man. You need life to, is weird. You, you need yes, your own it views is. on it. <laughs> like, yes, indeed. I agree 100%, but, Quinn. Anyway. Yeah, back to back to <laughs> Castlevania. Sorry. It's just the whole corruption of this, church in this. It's hard it's to just, watch. It really is. It is because it, you just want to strangle that bishop because it's just like, you're just like, you are everything that is wrong with religion. I want to strangle you until your eyes pop out of your Every head. Every recording session we've had so far for this show has led us into an actual discussion about the current world. And if that doesn't show like a good plot and good like relatability. Well, well yeah. And here's the thing. This isn't like socking you over the head with it no. and just making you. It just really makes you it's, think. It's not treating you like you're stupid. This okay. actually is treating you like you're an adult and you actually can form your own opinions. It's nice. It is. I love this show so much. Anyway, back to it. By the way, you're all going to die. Me. What? <laughs> the current bishop of this place is... What? Well, he's beyond insane. But into new lands of just snake fuckingly crazy and convinced <laughs> that the salvation of Grace it lays you in new people he being snakes. torn to pieces. Mm. I think they call those scaly boys. Goes down. Stop. By his Stop. Logic, you have to die. <laughs> <laughs> Nate, no! <laughs> I had to do it. I had to say it. Woo! Okay, back to it. Five before the night creatures conduct. I'm mad. You're way. right. What happens if we stay and survive? It's time for those of us who fight that war to stand up and be responsible, Trevor Belmont. You should leave now. <sighs> no. You're leaving. Right now, Trevor. Uh. <sighs> Night comes. speakers I've put them somewhere safe I swear it just moved <laughs> you defend evil give them to us no shut up you're getting no blood today so shut up you will <laughs> give us the speakers so that we can save this city this city's lost the family you demonized and excommunicated has fought and died through generations for this country. We do this thing for Wallachia and her people. And it's not the dying that frightens us. It's never having stood up and fought for you. I am Trevor Belmont of the House of Belmont. And dying has never frightened me. There's a bunch of interesting toys for priests to have. <laughs> My dude. Yeah, clear out. Torches and pitchforks. It's the Shrek special. <laughs> Aha. Oh, in the other eye. <laughs> I literally almost made a joke about he's gonna lose his other eye. Oh! <laughs> Those two just yeeted each other. Yeet! He's like, oh god, I hate being this good. Ooh. There he is! Well, there you go. Nice. So, yeah, uh, Trevor is taking a stand against uh, the church and uh, uh, I guess trying to minimize the amount of damage he does to the mob. Because honestly, 
They don't know no better. They really don't. They're the ignorant masses. I mean, that's that's the thing. That's why the church was able to maintain itself so so hard was because it, of the ignorant masses. I mean, it's... Oh, yikes. I know, right? <laughs> I know. It, it, And that's kind of what we have nowadays, the ignorant masses. They believe the first thing they see uh, posted on Facebook or Twitter or anything like that Instead of doing research themselves and finding out, oh, hey, there's actually a lot more to this than what they're saying on here. It's like, oh, so wearing a mask does nothing? Oh, well, why am I wearing this mask? Wait, wearing a mask does do something? Oh, okay. It's like, honestly, come on. So my favorite regarding the mask situation. Oh, God. Yeah, go ahead. People are like. It says on the box that the max doesn't doesn't protect you against the virus, so why would you wear it? And I'm like, you realize that the mask is to prevent you from spreading. The the, the sick person has to wear the mask. That's yeah. why it doesn't protect you. Yeah, and it exactly. does provide a very small amount of protection for you too still, but reg- that's not the point. Like, no. what argument are you trying to make? <laughs> no, there. you see, there is no argument to be made. You see, people base their arguments off of invalid information or off of points of view that honestly they that don't even that don't even have an argument to be made and that's what infuriates me so many people it's just like it's like the whole thing it's like oh i can balance my checkbook so why can't the government balance the balance the debt it's a lot more complicated than that my dude think about it like there's a lot more shit going on than just you, one person writing in your checkbook is like, mm, oh, that was easy. Yeah, guess what? It's not that easy to to like decipher and and put shit in order. Much like what's happening right now with this virus, we still don't know all there is to know about it. We still don't. I mean, it's like, where did it come from? Is it manufactured? Did it come from a bat? Is it something else? Uh, okay, how come so many people in Germany, even though the amount of people who are sick are there? aren't dying. Why is that? Is there some sort of immunity that the Germans have? Or is there some other thing that's going on? Or or is it the reason why it spread here in the States is because, oh, because of the protests, or oh, because they opened businesses back up. And I'm like, yes, it's because of both. Everyone who protested, about three quarters of them weren't wearing masks, and everyone who goes into these restaurants, even though they have the whole thing, it's like, wear a mask or else you can't come in, they don't enforce it. They're starting to, at least. Well, they are now, but... Honestly, it's just, it, it's sheer stupidity. Like, don't get me wrong, there's stuff about this that stinks and doesn't make sense to me, but that doesn't mean don't try and be safe. I mean, there's 136,000 people who have died because of this. And last, and here's the thing, this whole thing is being blown up to a certain degree that's actually ridiculous, but honestly, I don't understand why people last year didn't freak out over 1.5 million people dying from tuberculosis. Did you know that? One and a half million people died last year of tuberculosis. My, my Nobody is, knew about it. My thing is, I don't give a shit about that. What I give a shit about is, like, you were acting... I actually read this comment from someone that was on my Facebook. For real, I work with the guy. Yeah. He said that having to wear a mask is taking away his rights in the same way that they force Muslim women to wear like, Yeah, I heard coverings. about Yeah, I remember that. And I was like... That's not comparable. This is for public health and safety reasons, and that is the religion. You can't do that. That is that. Here's the thing: I will if, wear my mask because it is for the better good. Until if uh, like, and, and here's the thing about women wearing hijabs: women who choose to wear hijabs, that's their business. Yeah, he said forced. I was like, that's not always the there, case. There, there's a lot of places that it is forced, but in a lot of places. In a lot of places like the United Arab Emirates, no, that's not enforced. I mean, I see things very frequently about women, like, defending that this is what they want to be doing. Or and, and that's, if they choose not to, their family And that's their prerogative. Them, like, things like that. Like, yeah. it's not... He, he, there was a lot of wrong well, with what he said. Well, uh, of course. That, well, it's because he's misinformed. He thinks that all Muslim women who have the hijab honestly don't have a choice in it. But there are women out there who do have the choice to wear that. It's a lot like women in. Uh, it's like women who choose to choose to wear the like full body cover black, like almost like black curtains. Yeah. Because honestly, it's their choice. And I'm it, not ignorant to the fact that in other countries there are situations where women are forced. Oh, to absolutely. Kind of absolutely. I'm not ignorant to that. But yeah. He's talking about 
like in the United States, um, having to wear a mask being the same thing as a religious. <laughs> yeah. Well, here's the thing. In the Middle East, there's always been a prom a prom a a problem with the practice of religious freedom. Right. There has been because um, they actually tried to bring uh, they actually tried to bring this up, and you know which you know the countries in the Middle East that have create that have uh, had the biggest like human you know, you know humane atrocities and everything. Mm-hmm. Um, the whole thing with it is that when Israel, you know, when Israel came in, you know, came into being, whenever British Palestine uh, was given over to the Israelites after World War II, um, everyone wants to blame Israel for ha- for being like the worst country in the Middle East. So like, oh, they they you know they don't allow anything. They do this. They do that. Mm-hmm. Um, actually, Israel has ha- religious freedom is in their edict. Uh, Muslims are Muslims are not restricted in any way whenever it comes to their living conditions. Uh, like everything in the in Israel, I'm not gonna say every. Well, okay, not everything, but the majority of the stuff in Israel is way better than almost every other place in the Middle East. The only place I can think of other than that one is the United Arab Emirates mm. and uh, certain places in Saudi Arabia. But again, you know, it's it just goes back to the whole thing. It's where the country is versus where we want them to be. Now, to say that we are the pinnacle of like of like perfect equality and all that, that's not that's not accurate. But we, as the United States, like there's more freedoms afforded to people here than a lot of places in the world. Right. But it, we're still working on it. There's still levels we have to go through before we get to a point where I can safely say, yeah, we're good now. I'd say we're okay. We're not great. We're not good. And but I we're okay. And I claim to be the most educated about this kind of issues. Like, yeah, I, I just... It's just me studying world history and seeing the current world as it is and everyone saying, oh, this is the problem here, this is the problem there. And I'm like, this is the exact same thing that's been happening all throughout history. The problem that exists never gets solved because no one is willing to admit to it. No one is willing to admit to the problem. The The problem is the administration that we have in power right now, the, all these people, like all these senators, all these uh, how, you know, representatives and governors, there is no term limits on how long they can stay in power. If there was a limit then honestly I think that would make things a lot better because the powers that be want things to stay the same just so that they can stay in power. They don't want things to get better because if things get better, then that means things have to change on one side. And if things change on one side and get better on one side than on this side, then that means that, oh, there's a chance I could lose. So instead, everyone wants to wants everything to stay in the gray area instead of you know good being done. Instead, they just let... They just continue to... Let, for instance... What we have in this country right now is corporate socialism. Think about this: all these big companies out there that pretty much hold a can- that hold rights over our lives, what we are able to consume, what we are able to watch, what we're able to do at all. For instance, Google owns a shit ton of our ability of online of, of like online transactions and online everything. You know, yeah. when everything's online, I mean. YouTube is a monopoly of uh, of pretty much almost most entertainment sources out there, and then of course there's Facebook, which has a handle on social uh, social networking. But don't get me wrong, Insta and and Instagram they're owned by Facebook. A lot of people don't know that. I didn't know that they had been bought out or whatever. I guess. Yeah, and the thing is, all these companies have all this power, and the government allows them to do this because they in turn work for the government. So those companies and the government are all working together, and people are mad. They say, oh, capitalism's bad, capitalism's bad. It's like, not really. I mean, it's not really what we got now is capitalism. It's corporate socialism where pretty much you can only select from the ones that the government allow you to, and the ones that the government allow you to are the ones that are the most powerful. So right. it's a bastardization of what, of, of what we're supposed to have in this country. Nate, I have a question for you. Go ahead. What is one conspiracy theory that you believe in? (laughs) 
You better like choose wisely too. I want to hear a good one. And for like you guys watching, the, what is one conspiracy theory that you believe in sincerely? The worldwide pedophilia ring. I 100% believe in that. So Jeffrey Epstein did not kill himself and Maxwell and uh Maxine Galane is not going to kill herself. They're going to kill her because she's a loose end. Agree with you there. Way Wayfair is totally in on that. I saw that. I <laughs> saw that. That to me is just I, everyone uh, everyone who's pointed it out, all the articles, Bruh. everything. <laughs> and here's the thing. The very moment that that article went up, none of the mainstream media outlets touched it. Oh, none no. of them. Uh-uh. Epstein. No one touches Epstein. No one touches Max uh, Maxine Galane. Nothing. There is nothing being done about this stuff. <laughs> like, I and, 100% believe it. <laughs> oh, I do, too. I do, too. I mean, when there's a royal prince of the British royal family who has been outright just kicked out of the royal family because he opened his mouth, I mean, there's a problem. When all of these rich, rich people from all over the world, you know, Germany, the Netherlands, China... All of them have connections to Jeffrey Epstein and have flown on the quote-unquote Lolita Express to this <laughs> private island. Um, yeah, there's a problem, including former presidents Bill Clinton and uh, uh, who was it? Uh, it was Bill Clinton and I believe Jimmy Carter mm-hmm. both flew down there. I know Trump flew on the Lolita Express, but it wasn't to the island. It was to uh, Los Angeles, I believe. Uh, but... The whole thing just outright stinks. And there's no way you can convince me right now unless you can prevent, present me with considerable evidence that Jeffrey Epstein did not kill himself. There's no way you cannot convince me of that right now because health professionals and like, all the coincident. Okay. Coincidentally, the footage is gone. Well, no, uh, not just coincidentally. The footage is gone. The footage is gone. The security, the security guard... Uh, was uh, asleep. The uh, also the security guard was. Uh, was he a secu- fired for being asleep? No one knows. No <laughs> one ever did a follow up on him. Also, every uh, the medical examiner that they got to uh, look at Jeffrey Epstein has had multiple malpractice lawsuits brought up against him. Wasn't he the same? Or I don't know if it was a girl or whatever. It was a guy. Oh yeah, whoever it was. Didn't they do like multiple conspiracy theory related autopsies? Yes. Yeah. They're they're always the one that they bring in as like oh this guy's like former surgeon general former this former that and has had more malpractice lawsuits than anything else oh and not only that but uh, all the you know the the damage that Jeffrey Epstein had he could not have done to himself unless he unless he like rammed his throat against the side of uh, against the side of his bed which they which with how they found his body, is impossible. And that's not really something you do before. I mean, like... No! No! It was impossible for him to hang himself because the stuff that they... I mean, maybe he did, but, like, let's look at the footage then, right? Like... There is no footage. <laughs> there is no footage. And that's the problem. All the, like, one thing being wrong, that's coincidence. Two is strange. Three, it's a conspiracy. Everything surrounding his death not being right... It's bullshit. Speaking of that, we're going to move on uh, to the next uh, episode. Uh, Hopefully you all will join us for that. And uh, yeah, so until then, I'm Nate. Quinn. And we'll see you in the next one, everybody. (laughs) Peace out. (laughs) Jesus.